Adebola Oshomoji. As watchdog of the society, our attention shifts to Owo, a town in Odo State where bandits rained bullets on worshippers at a Catholic church during Sunday Mass. A black Sunday it is for the nation with over 40 people killed and scores injured as insecurity remains unabated. The war between Russia and Ukraine now over 100 days is assuming a more worrisome dimension as world leaders fear there is a looming food crisis over the entire international community. From the world of sports comes another record in men's lawn tennis as Rafael Nadal claimed his 14th French Open title, thus extending his Grand Slam singles title haul to 22. The package will be complemented by the social diary pullout, which brings to your viewing delight memorable social event. That segment will be anchored by Mujisola Cholaja. Hello, Mujisola. Hello, Adibola. I am Mujisola Cholaja, and as usual, uh, interesting package and people and events will come up much later. Stay with us. And just before we start, let's remind you that nothing in the universe can stop you from letting go and starting over. And now the news in details. Over 40 people have been reportedly killed in an attack on St. Francis Catholic Church or Walua Street in our town, our local government area of Ondo State. It was learned that the incident happened in church which is less than 200 meters away from the Palace of Olowo of Owo. Workers at the Federal Medical Center Owo confirmed that many people were brought in dead on Sunday. The attack was carried out during the Sunday Mass, with a viral online video showed some worshippers being killed in line in the pool of the, ch of the church in the pool of their own blood. One of the health workers on duty at the Federal Medical Center Owo where the casualties were taken to, said over 50 people had been brought to the hospital. President Muhammadu Buhari has commented, condemned the killing of worshippers at the Francis Catholic Church or a kingdom in Ondo State. Reacting President Buhari in a statement by his media aide, Femi Adeshino said, eternal sorrow awaits the assailant both on earth and untimely in the hereafter. President Buhari mourned the dead and condoled with their families, the Catholic Church and the government of Ondo State, charging emergency agencies to swing into action and bring succor to the wounded. President said no matter what, the country shall never give in to evil and wicked people, and darkness will never overcome light. Nigeria will eventually win. Meanwhile, Governor Rotimi Akere Dolu of Ondo State has lamented Sunday's attack at the St. Francis Catholic Church or War. He described the attack as a calculated assault on the people in a statement by his chief press secretary, Richard Olatunde. He also vowed to hunt down the masterminds of the assault, which left many people dead in the vile and satanic attack, is a calculated assault on the peace-loving people of our kingdom, who have enjoyed relative peace over the years. Christian faithfuls across Abelkota metropolis converged on their places of worship to observe the first Sunday service in the month of June. Religious leaders at the different worship centers said the fear of God and right attitude are required for the progress and to quench various social disorders confronting the country. Margaret Okunlola has the details. The first Sunday service in the month of June, being the sixth month in the calendar year, Christian faithfuls as usual gathered for Sunday service. But this time, they said it was a special day for high praise and worship, to express gratitude to their maker for his faithfulness. To some, it was a special Sunday in the Christian calendar called the Pentecostal Sunday. The implication of the Pentecost is that our high priest, who happened to be Jesus Christ, is alive. Solution to the world problem is to allow the Holy Spirit to take over. To other faithfuls, they tag the day as juvenile Sunday service to celebrate the children and acknowledge them in the vineyard of God. On the occasion of the celebration, 
children are particularly given the opportunity to anchor the affairs of church service. The juvenile address is for the children. We, are, we need to make them happy because today is their day. We are preparing our children for future. For them to have fear of God. Someone that has fear of God, there is no way he will be guided by spirit. Clerics used the opportunity to call on Nigerians, saying the country is in critical time and urged them to act in the fear of God. One of the reasons why things are going upside down is because we left God. Let us go back to God. It is God. If God, if we pray, if we pray, we are united and we pray to God. God will give us somebody who is after his heart like David that can deliver us. Nigeria is a blessed nation. Nigeria is a great country, blessed with intelligent people, but we don't have intelligent people in government. So things don't seem to go right. And uh, we keep praying that God will give us the right leaders come 2023. Nigerians who believe without God, nothing can be done perfectly. We should rely on God, not on the God fatherly God is able at all times. They added that right attitude is also a key factor as a way out of many challenges facing the country. Margaret Ukunola, OGCB News. The current administration in Ogun State, in its attempt at ensuring all inclusive government has constructed and rehabilitated 400 kilometers of road across its 20 local government, these constructions highlight its major achievement in infrastructure provision in the last three years. Yusuf Ghani brings details of infrastructure development in the last three years of the Prince Dakwa Abiodo led administration. That will be faithful and their true allegiance to the federal government of Nigeria. Since its assumption of office on the 29th of May 2019, the Prince Dakwa Abiodun led administration has been very clear about its vision, which is to create a focused and qualitative governance while creating an enabling environment for public private sector partnership, which is fundamental to the economic growth of the state and prosperity of the people. The vision of the administration is embedded in its five development pillars, Ishaya and Acronym, with I for infrastructure, S for social welfare and well being. A for education, Y for youth empowerment and job creation, and A for agriculture. The administration is not relenting in its quest to actualize this vision, which started with the implementation of its infrastructure arm. The approach of the Dakwa Biodo administration in infrastructure is not just inclusive, but participatory. The roads constructed or rehabilitated by the current administration have been on the request of people of the areas where they are situated. In the last three years in office, the Prince Dakwa Biodo administration has reconstructed and constructed roads in Ikola Navy Repower Road in Adood Water, the 3.2 kilometer elite Okelanto Road, Abeokuta, Abairi Wale Road, Shagamu, Awujale Stadium Road, Okeaje Road, Ijebode, Refugee Camp, Owawa, Ilakmuru, Ashafauke, Ashafai Sale, Ayegu, Ojofa Street, Ijebode, Mulipa Fusegbuye, Araromi Street, Ekperu, Fajo Ajegule America Junction, Alogi Street to Unity Estate, Bonogun Obantoko, Ojale Road, Ekperu, Vespa Ekorita Meje, Oloshe Tuntun Ifo, Channel Television Street, Ishere, Pansheke Adigbe Road, Abeokuta, Oduafa Bridge, Idiroko, among others. The road was very, very bad before the intervention of the governor of Ogun State. The road is very is okay now. We can easily access Adigbe and Pansheke Road now. This is a, an age long dream come true. Because we have been expecting this for admission to, to administration and it had been disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. But then, if you have a responsibility and you don't shake it, I think we should appreciate you. If I want to thank uh, His Excellency the Governor for his kind uh, guest job. Because this role is almost impossible. But thank, thank God for this dividend of democracy. We appreciate him and we pray that God will continue to bless him. The Ijebu de Ekme Road and Shagamu Interchange to Abel Kuta, which is now President Muhammadu Buhari Road, as well as the Gateway City Gate, is another significant and monumental structure 
among other many legacy projects aimed at giving a befitting status to the Gateway State was commissioned early this year by President Muhammad Buhari. Governor Biodu has always said every project that is of economic value to the people and the prosperity of the state will be completed. Therefore, work has resumed on ongoing and new projects, which include Inner Road, Itori Junction, Molusi College Road, Ijebu Igbo, Elisha Market Road, Esure Ijebu Mushi Road, Olumore Sunny Road, Imashai Igo Koto Ayetoro Road, Joju Road, Mulikpa Express Ijebu Ode, Okiola Road, Imeko, Agowoye Elisha Road, Songorada Bow to Ijoko Bridge, Agbado Bridge to Lambe, and Lafewa Ayetoro Randa Road. Very fantastic. He promised me, and uh, uh, he fulfilled the promise that as soon as he finished a in the Abode Road, he would definitely ask the contractor to move to the side. And he did it. And that's one thing with the style of this our governor. When he promised, he to about three local governments in a a compass that that road in question covered. The Aton Lusada Agbara Road in Ado Dota local government is another giant project and backed upon by this administration. Our vision speaks to our desire to increase our ranking, the ranking of the state on the ease of doing business index. Number one, because we believe that by doing that, it would allow us to bring investors into the state, and as we bring investors to the state, it will translate to individual prosperity of our people. We cannot claim to be living up to our vision without taking up the construction of this road. Why? Because with each time an industry leaves Open State, it means that it adds to the number of unemployed indigenous or citizens of our, of our state. So we decided that we were going to invest in the reconstruction of this highway in line with our promise to our people. The construction of an agricultural airport in Elishan, embarked upon by the current administration, is expected to create more than 25,000 employment opportunities. So quite inspiring to see that your team has worked very hard to do a quality job in a very short period of time despite COVID and all the issues. So I think big congratulations to your team to do that. And as Arise, we're looking forward to partnering with you to develop the agro-processing zone here and ensure that we take it to the next step in terms of creating the jobs and creating the industry around the agro-industry here. In all, the Dakwa Building-led administration has constructed over 400 kilometers of road across the 20 local governments in the states. The historical cultural center, Kuto Abel Kuta, is also another significant structure that has a new look through the participatory vision of Governor Dakwa Biodun to change the ambience of the monumental building. The various infrastructures are not just about provision, they are already creating multiplying effects on the economy of the state, with more potentials of this still expected in years to come. Yusuf Ganiyu, OJTV News. Money bags and money politics have played determinant factors in the nation's polity since the Second Republic. Observers have expressed shock at the level with which money had gone to influence the party primaries despite various laws put in place to guide the nation's democracy. That is vote and cook good delicacy, stomach infrastructure and dollarization of electoral process are the new lexicons or ideologies in the nation's political dictionaries. The recently concluded primaries of the major political parties in the country reveal the underbelly of the nation's policy and the extent of the decay in the nation's democracy to the abyss of political mercantile or votes for the highest bidders, which is capable of defeating the very essence and uh, purpose of democracy. When you are campaigning, you may be saying some truths and, and you may be telling some lies. But what we are complaining about is the insensitive display of Buying the conscience, buying the votes of delegates. One could not substantiate that way. dollars are being flown around, thrown run around. And I mean, I saw a video clip where somebody said, you know, he went to go and buy a car. I mean, after being a, the, uh, being, uh, after serving as a delegate, it's not supposed to be. 
a lot of money comes into it. It's not helping our democracy. The multidimensional nature of any mercantile activities means no single individual should be targeted for the blame as attention needs to also be directed at the willing sellers of votes. But they should not let money be, that is the footers now, the determining factor, because that is what they are doing. The Boko Sibe, uh, 5,000, 10,000 per person, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't make sense. It is when our people are well educated, they don't have a choice rather than, rather than take 5 naira, 10 naira, and then go and vote. And that is why I was suggesting that the issue of a dependent candidate should, should be reviewed. People can still be educated. There must be a way out of this if the nation's democracy is not to be jeopardized. Why can't electorates check the back of their houses and come up with somebody who they know very well, who lives in just a room and a parlor, who is a retired headmaster, and say, okay, we are putting you, we are sending you to Abuja to represent us. Number one thing the government needs to do is probably we have to start doing e-voting. In a situation where we are having e-voting, you don't know me, I don't know you, you want to vote for me, you take your phone and vote, I won't even know that you have voted for me. So there is no way I want to say I want to come and bribe you. The readiness to do what is required to tackle the challenge of vote buying by all stakeholders is what remains to be seen. Matthew Sholmi, OGTV News. Nigeria has the lowest access to electricity globally, with about 92 million persons out of the country's 200 million population lacking access to power. The Energy Progress Report 2022, released by Tracking SDG 7, has revealed the report produced in conjunction with the International Energy Agency, International Renewable Energy Agency, United Nations Statistics Division, the World Bank and the World Health Organization indicated that Nigeria was followed by the Democratic Republic of Congo's 72 million, Ethiopia's 56 million and Pakistan's 54 million access deficit. The latest report, which covered 2020, noted that access to electricity in Nigeria remained poor because electrification advances failed to keep pace with population growth. This, it said, was in contrast with Kenya and Uganda's fastest progress in electrification due to their annualized increases of more than 3 percent point between 2010 and 2020. The power problem has remained a perennial problem in Nigeria, stifling the country's industrial growth, limiting commercial ventures, expansion and profitability, and the well-being of its people. The report has it that 20 countries with the largest access deficit were home to 76% of the global population living without access to electricity, or 560 million people in 2020. Most of the top 20 deficit countries are in Sub-Saharan Africa. There have been 780 confirmed cases of monkeypox in countries where the virus is not usually found, the World Health Organization says. That is roughly triple the 257 cases it reported a week ago. It says the figure for the past three weeks is probably an underestimate and accesses the global risk level as moderate. The infection is usually mild, but this is the first time it has spread widely outside Central and West Africa. The WHO said cases had been identified in 27 countries where it is not already endemic, meaning places it is expected to be found. Most of these new cases are in Europe and North America, as well as small numbers in Mexico, Argentina, Morocco, and the United Arab Emirates. The UK has the most cases with 207, followed by Spain with 156, and Portugal with 138. In its latest update, the WHO said some countries were reporting that new cases were appearing beyond known contacts of previously confirmed cases, which it said suggested chains of transmission were being missed through undetected circulation of the virus. 
the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has introduced a new digital technology to equip lawyers handling criminal cases and tackle reoccurring incidents of missing files. The police boss also disclosed that no fewer than 50 lawyers were being churned out annually from the police college. The IG made the statement during the official unveiling of the QSoft hybrid case management system, an application designed to enhance the productivity of lawyers by automating the management of a case from inception until judgment is delivered. The Inspector General of Police stated that the Nigeria Police Force prides itself as one of the federal government's agencies with the highest pool of lawyers with high quality. As part of its contribution to address insecurity in Nigeria, the United Nations had advised the federal government to promote and ensure reconciliation in all segments of the country. The UN, booming the western state of the nation, said that ensuring national reconciliation would help forestall the outbreak, escalation, continuation, and reoccurrence of conflict in the country. The UN's president, coordinator, and representative of the UN Secretary General in the Czech Republic, Dr. Ozonia Ojelu, made his call during a one day seminar on agenda for peace building in Nigeria in Abuja. He said, as the global and the process to build a common vision of a society, the federal government must ensure that the needs of all segments of the population are taken into account which encompasses activities aimed at preventing the outbreak, escalation, continuation, and reoccurrence of conflict. In addition, addressing root causes, assisting parties to conflict to end hostilities, ensuring national reconciliation, moving forward, recovery, reconstruction, and development, and emphasizing that sustaining peace is a shared task and responsibility that needs to be fulfilled by government and all other national stakeholders. He, however, charged federal government to take prevention of conflict as a collective effort by collaborating with local to global government and non-governmental public and private sectors. A number of explosions shocked parts of Kyiv early on Sunday in the first assault on Ukraine's capital for weeks. Russia claims its targets are side storing tanks supplied by Europe. But Ukraine says the rocket hit a train repair plant where no tanks were held. Columns of black smoke could be seen above the city after the attack, and at least one person was hurt. Kyiv has been largely spread in recent months as Russian force concentrate attacks on, Don on Donbass in eastern Ukraine. The capital has felt like it is returning to some sort of normality. Bars and cafes are open and people are back on the street. March day 32 matches of the Nigeria Professional Football League were played across the Federation on Sunday with interesting result. In Umaya, Abia Warriors beat Enogu Rangers 2-0. The same result Quara United had in Ilori over visiting Castina United. Heartland piped Aqua United 1-0 in Oweri. Likewise, Wiki Tourist, who defeated League Le Le Leeds Rivers United, won nil in Bauchi. In Ajure, Sunshine Stars claimed Fred Navs with a 2-1 victory over Nasara United. Plateau United piped Canopilas 1-0 as Shooting Stars lost on the road 2-0 to Dakar FC in Yu. Elsewhere, MFM and Lobby Stars played out a scoreless draw in Lagos. Remo Stars had a 1-0. Visitry over Gombe United in Ikene, while Niger Tornadoes defeated Enyimba 2-1 in Abuja. Rafael Nadal reclaimed his crown as the king of the French Open, winning a record extending 14th title by beating Norway's Kaspar Rod in straight set. Spain's Nadal 36-163-6360 against Norwegian 8 seed Rod to also extend his record number one of Grand Slam men's singles titles to 22. He moves to her head of his great rivals Roger Federer and Nova Djokovic. Nadal, who lost to Djokovic in the semi-finals last year, has won 112 of his 115 matches on the Paris clay. After also winning the Australian Open in January, 
Nadal has claimed back-to-back -back major titles for the first time since 2010, when he won the French Open, Wimbledon, and U.S. Open in a row. Two days after his 36th birthday, Nadal becomes the oldest French Open men's singles champion and surpasses fellow Spanidian Andres Gimeno, who won age 34 in 1972. Up next is People and Event with Mojisola Sholaja. Stay tuned.